you were talking about immune health, super important topic this time of year. Everyone wants to be healthy and, you know, avoid the cold and flu if we can. So let's get into it. So today we're going to talk about what exactly immunity is, the role of nutrition, the gut microbiome, sleep, stress, and supplementation, which are all factors that kind of go into building up that immunity. And I think it's important to say that your immune system isn't something that you can just boost just like that. Like any other healthy lifestyle behavior, it's something that you culminate and build over time. So the more you work on it, the more it's going to improve and remain consistently better. So immunity is made up of innate and adaptive immunity and inflammation. So I'm going to give you a real quick what exactly immunity is, and then we'll get to what you can do to boost your immune system, okay? So your immune system is our body's natural defense mechanism. And like I said, we have that innate immunity and the adaptive immunity. So your innate immunity is things like your skin, which protects viruses from invading, your mucous membranes, which catches viruses, even the liquids in your eyeballs, all of that. Um, it's nonspecific. Your adaptive immunity is more specific. So this is like the immunity that you build up from being exposed to viruses. This is the immunity from vaccines or the immunity that your mother passes on to you when you're a baby. So we want to build up our immunity from both acute and chronic conditions. So I think when we think of boosting our immune system, we mainly think of the acute conditions like a cold or a flu. These are short-term conditions that generally are a localized response. So think about a good example would be when you maybe have a cold, you briefly have a fever for a couple of days. This is your body having that immune response to the virus that's invading your body as it tries to heal and recover. But we also wanna obtain immunity from chronic conditions. So chronic inflammation is low-grade systemic inflammatory response, um, which has a lot of negative side effects like um, cellular and tissue damage and thickening and scarring of connective tissues. Um, and it's it can lead to some of those chronic diseases like heart disease, diabetes, cancer, et cetera. So really any disease that you've heard of is rooted inflammation, cancer, diabetes, heart disease, all these things are rooted in inflammation. So what contributes to inflammation and how can we prevent that? So it's just a few things that contribute to inflammation are acute inflammation. So that short response, which could eventually, if not treated, lead to a chronic inflamed state, increase its sugar intake, Sugar naturally causes inflammation. It's our body's response, which is a good thing, but when it's chronic and repeated over time, elevated blood sugars cause inflammation and lead to those chronic conditions. Excessive intakes of omega-6 fatty acids. I'll get into this, but omega-6 fatty acids are found in certain oils, um, and it's important to have a balanced ratio of these. Obesity and increased abdominal fat leads to inflammation undernourished or calorie restriction conversely also leads to inflammation, lack of adequate sleep, stress, which could be physical, emotional, or perceived. So as you can see on the left side here, um, we can have inflammation in every single part of our body. So of course, gonna touch on my favorite topic first, the role of nutrition and the power of your fork. So if you really want to focus on improving your immune system and boosting it, you want to eat foods that build, fuel, protect, and prevent. So the best way to do that is adapting a Mediterranean style of eating. And what this really means is focusing on consuming those healthy, full fats, high fiber and complex carbohydrates, and quality proteins, while also decreasing your added sugar intake. So when I say build, that is protein. Protein builds not only muscles, but it also builds up your immune system. 
Um, it supports your immune system and it's the building blocks for enzymes and immunoglobins. And of course, I think most people know where to find protein, but you can find it in your poultry, beef, fish, eggs, dairy, beans, legumes, nuts, seeds, and so much more. So protein is usually an easier one for people to hit. Then we have carbohydrates. So I think carbohydrates tend to get a bad rap, but they shouldn't because they also play a really important role in your immune system. They're a primary source of energy for our body. If we don't have energy, we can't function. So it fuels the cells of our immune system. So if you wanna focus on getting some good quality carbohydrates, you're gonna focus on whole grains, minimally processed foods, and at least three grams of fiber per serving. So fiber, the reason why it's so important is it helps feed the healthy gut bacteria in your digestive tract, which is where almost your entire immune system is housed. So we'll get into the digestive tract later on, but um, here are some great high fiber foods on the left side, fruits, vegetables, whole grain, um, you know, keep the skins on your potato, that type of thing. You know, if it has that good crunch, it's probably good high in, or high in fiber. <laughs> Fats. So fats are really important because they protect, they modulate our immune response, and they're necessary for the absorption of fat soluble vitamins. So those fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K, you absolutely cannot absorb them at all if you are not consuming healthy fat. So fat has also gotten a bad rap in the past. I think it was like the 1980s where everyone was on a low fat diet. And Fats are so protective and anti-inflammatory and great and wonderful for our heart. So if there's anything you can take away from this today, it's really important to include those healthy fats in your diet, um, even though they do come with a little bit more calories with them. So you want to eat fats that give back. Um, so those would be unsaturated fats or omega-3 fatty acids. So some examples of foods that are healthy fats that you should reach for or try to stock your pantry with are nuts and seeds and olive oil or avocado oil, coconut oil, um, peanut butter, any nut butter, um, tuna, salmon, fatty fish, um, chia and flax seeds. Those are a few examples. Um, and then the mega six fatty acids, I mentioned that earlier. Oh yeah. Yeah, Betsy was saying that she learned the hard way on vitamin D. Like I said, that's a fat soluble vitamin. So she had really low vitamin D stores because she wasn't eating adequate fat. So that's one way to work on that. Um, so yeah, decreasing your omega-6 fatty acids. So here's the thing. In the standard American diet, we have an imbalance of omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acids. So what this means is that these omega-6 fatty acids aren't necessarily like toxic to you alone, but when you have far more omega-6 fatty acids in your diet in comparison to omega-3, that imbalance causes a lot of inflammation within your body. So, you know, I go to Aldi's and I'll shop there and every single item has canola oil in it. And it's like crackers and like just things that I'm like, why does that even have canola oil in it? Like it doesn't even need that. So, you know, this is something to really look for on your labels. Like I said, you don't have to avoid it entirely, but really trying to find a balance in your diet of the two to decrease the overall inflammation and your body protect your heart. And of course, this also improves your cholesterol and heart health. Prevent. So, Fruits and vegetables prevent inflammation and disease. They are very anti-inflammatory. They have natural vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, phytochemicals, enzymes, and fibers. They are the support staff to your body. I mean, literally antioxidants literally destroy the free radicals that can lead to cancer and other diseases. So it is so important that you are eating these foods. And this is where the saying food is medicine really comes from. These foods are truly therapeutic and contain so many different vitamins and minerals that allow your body to function optimally. So, you know, just focusing on some of the key vitamins that support your immune health are vitamin A, C, D, and selenium. Um, so vitamin A keeps your skin and tissues in the digestive and respiratory tracts healthy. 
Vitamin C is a highly effective antioxidant and protects the integrity of your immune cells. And vitamin C, a lot of people supplement this, but it's also in a lot of foods like vegetables, fruits, whole grains, beans, um, and especially deep red, orange, and yellow produce like pumpkins or squash or carrots. Um, and then vitamin D, I think we all know this one. I hope you all know this one. Living in Ohio, we do not get enough vitamin D during the winter. So starting now, if you're not already supplementing, I highly recommend that you supplement vitamin D. Um, it is found in some foods, although it's just not highly absorbable and not in a lot of different foods. So aside from sunlight, you can get it in salmon and eggs and some fortified dairy products and cereals. Like if you ever see the vitamin D fortified, um, milk. That's an example of a place that you could get in your diet, but really relying on just supplementing is one of the best things you can do. Um, next up is selenium. And this one is important for a lot of things. So selenium is underrated. Um, so it's required for the function of several enzymes, which enhance the progression of viruses and works with vitamin C and E. And it's actually important for thyroid help and your metabolism of your, in your body's metabolism. So something that I actually do is I take two Brazilian, Brazil nuts a day. So I literally keep a bag in my cabinet and take two Brazilian, Brazil nuts a day, like a vitamin. When I'm taking my vitamins for the day, I take my Brazil nuts because there are two Brazil nuts gets you your daily RDI for selenium, gives you that immune health, gives you that, um, good, thyroid function. So really recommend eating those Brazil nuts, um, but you can also get them in sunflower seeds, salmon, tuna, and poultry are some examples. So those are really the key immune boosting nut nutrients. But of course, there are a lot of other important nutrients. I'm not gonna go into all these, but vitamin E, B6, folate, zinc, copper, and iron are really important too. And, you know, like I said before, what you can take away from this is you see all these vitamins and you see all these different foods that they're in, almonds, peanut butter, whole grains, lean meats, green leafy vegetables. What this tells me or what this should tell you is that it's really important that you eat a variety of different foods, different colors, different food groups, dairy, protein, grains, all those things, having a balanced diet is really important to get in all these nutrients. And if you're someone who um, is really a picky eater or struggles to maybe eat a lot of different vegetables, um, you can supplement. Food is always the most optimal way to get these nutrients um, because it has phytochemicals, which as far as we know right now, cannot be replicated, the benefits of that in a supplement. Um, but it will, it is the next best thing. So I'll get into supplements later in the presentation, but um, I just wanted to share that with you that, you know, it's just really important to get that variety of different foods in your diet. All right. So let's talk about the gut microbiome. This is a little bit more of a fringe topic and not a lot of people know about this. So I love to talk about it. Um, the microbiome and the immune system are critically intertwined. And this is because your microbiome is your immune system's BFF. 70% of your immune system is housed in the gut. 70%. Isn't that insane? So the, the health of your digestive tract really has more influence than anything else on your immune health. And I mean, I can get into everything else your microbiome does. It plays a, an important role in mood and mental clarity and emotional well-being. Um, cravings and so many other things. But, you know, today we'll talk about the immune benefits and it does assist in a detoxification, inhibits or intensifies inflammation, um, balances your insulin sensitivity, absorbs foods, produces short-chain fatty acids, produces vitamins. But the biggest thing is that this is where your food is absorbed, right? So when you your food goes in through your mouth, through your stomach, into your digestive tract. Your stomach isn't absorbing, well, your stomach absorbs some things, but mainly the absorption of all those vitamins from your carrots, your celery, your broccoli, that's happening in your digestive system. So if the walls of your digestive system are not inflamed and healthy, you're going to absorb those vitamins much better and therefore be overall healthier. You know, maybe if you have a really inflamed digestive tract and poor gut health, 
even though you might go and eat these foods, your body's not absorbing them as well, and therefore you may not be getting as many benefits. So how can you increase the biodiversity of your digestive tract? So I like to say you're, you know, kind of like this picture, your digestive tract is like a garden and you have to tend to it and, you know, give it fertilizer and water and all those things that keep it healthy. So some of the things you can avoid are processed foods, right? Um, added sugars and artificial sweeteners especially are not great for that biodiversity. Um, and alcohol, minimizing alcohol intake, not great for your gut health. Um, avoiding foods high in trans fat. Those are those highly processed fats that you see in like um, trans fats are in peanut butter and like pastries and really highly processed foods. Um, and then adding probiotics and prebiotics. Probiotics are amazing. And we're going to talk about those next. Does anyone have any questions so far? I know I'm talking fast, but I'm trying to stay on time for you guys. I'm going to keep moving. <laughs> so probiotics are basically live bacteria, but in food, which is kind of a crazy concept. So it's basically food with living bacteria that we eat and it's good for us. I know it's insane. Um, so in different bacteria strains, different probiotics have different benefits. So if you just recently had a surgery and you were on antibiotics, um, or you had a UTI or a yeast infection, something like that, there's specific strains of probiotics that your doctor can prescribe, or you can get them online um, that will help with those conditions. Um, or you can take a general probiotic for overall gut health every day. And these have had have found been found to have a ton of benefits, obviously increasing your biodiversity, but has even been found to change your metabolic pathways of carbohydrate me metabolism um, as that's happening in the digestive tract. Um, so where can you find them? This picture on the right has some examples, kimchi, sauerkraut, pickles, yogurt, kefir, buttermilk, raw cheese, cottage cheese, kombucha, sourdough bread, miso. Those are just some examples. And then of course you can supplement. Um, my personal recommendation for supplements, do what you want, do your own research. I really like, um, Dr. Axe, his brand of probiotics, ancient nutrition probiotics, that's what it's called. Um, I really like that brand. I think they're high quality. So it's important to have a really high quality probiotic um, to make sure you're getting all those benefits. And generally I say like the more bacterial cultures, the better. So you'll see ones that have one or two strains, which is what you get when you're eating yogurt. So if I talk about probiotics, often people say, well, I do eat yogurt and that's good. That's a good probiotic food, but um, yogurt only has a couple different strains, whereas a probiotic might have like 45 different strains. So it can have some more benefits to your overall kind of flora and fauna of that digestive tract. All right. Now, what feeds our probiotics is prebiotics. So Prebiotics are basically insoluble fiber that are resistant to digestion. So this is, we already talked about fiber, right? Fiber is in our fruits and our vegetables and, you know, our foods like oatmeal and stuff like that. Um, so this is just kind of a subgroup of that that feeds your digestive tract. So types and amounts of fiber are directly related to the richness of the microbiota in your digestive tract. Um, so it feeds them, right? So this is its food. So really to get the best benefits out of your probiotics, if you're supplementing or even your probiotic rich foods is making sure that you're eating prebiotics as well. So if you're having that yogurt, are you also having some fruit or, you know, maybe some asparagus or something like that in your diet throughout the day so that you're feeding those probiotics so that they can grow and thrive, right? So that's like watering that garden. Um, you know, you're, you've got your garden, you've got your probiotics, so you're taking it and now you're feeding those probiotics so they can, that garden could stay strong and healthy. Um, so like I said, you can find these in vegetables and fruit and whole grains and beans and peas and nuts and seeds and all that good stuff. You can see some in the picture on the left side, there are some examples and I will, um, share this presentation after I'm done. I'm currently recording and, um, and I'll share the slides too. So if you have any thoughts or questions, you can kind of review them. Cause like I said, I know I'm talking fast. <laughs> All right, next up is sleep. How are you recovering? 
So sleep and the circadian rhythm are strong regulators of our immuno, immunological processes. So, you know, it's pretty crazy because sometimes like it's easy to stay up late or, you know, you have other priorities, but sleep deprivation and the accompanying stress response invoke a persistent pro-inflammatory cytokine response. Basically your immune system goes into overdrive. It does not like lack of sleep. Um, so it causes raises in cortisol, which increases cravings and um, decreases feelings of fullness. So then you're overeating. Um, and then of course, lack of sleep also leads to increased stress. So in a study of 164 healthy adults, those who slept fewer than six hours each night were more likely to catch a cold than those who slept six hours or more each night. And I know sleep can be tough for a lot of people. So I'm gonna give you some tips to improve sleep. So number one is avoiding chemicals that disrupt your sleep, such as nicotine, caffeine, and alcohol at least four to six hours before bed. I was just talking to someone last week who told me that she drinks a couple glasses of wine before bed to help her fall asleep. The problem with that is that because your body is still processing that alcohol while you are sleeping, you are not getting quality sleep. And the same goes for nicotine and caffeine. Um, you know, you don't need to avoid caffeine altogether, but maybe if you're struggling to sleep, don't have caffeine after noon or something like that. Eating lighter meals at night. This is the same as that alcohol. You don't want to eat a heavy meal before going to bed because same thing, your body is still digesting. So it's not able to focus on getting that good quality restorative sleep because it's digesting. Um, so I feel like there's a lot of, um, I don't know, like people think that like, that's, it's bad to eat at night. Cause it just turns right into fat. That is absolutely not the case. The only really negative side effect of eating late at night or right before bed is this, that it's going to impact your quality of sleep. So staying active this one, you know, if you are having trouble falling asleep, I mean, it's a no brainer, right? You exercise, you're more tired. You're going to sleep more heavily. It's just because your body's more tired. It needs that rest. Um, taking a hot shower or bath just to help you relax more avoiding screens. You know, that blue light can really impact, um, your body's ability to get into that sleep and restore mode, keeping your bedroom dark and cool. I believe the optimal temperature for sleep is is like 68 or 69 degrees Fahrenheit. And when there's an increase in temperature, you're going to naturally wake up. So it's good to keep your room cool and dark because if there's an increase in temperature, you will wake up. That's a natural mechanism for your body. Um, only getting to bed if you are tired. Your brain draws connections. If your brain thinks it's okay to sit up and work in bed, stare at your phone, do whatever, watch TV, your brain is not going to associate your bed only with sleep. So make sure if you're struggling with sleep, make sure you are only sleeping in your bed and doing absolutely nothing else. Um, get out of bed if you don't fall asleep within 20 minutes. Same reason, because we don't want our brains to associate the bed with being awake. And then, of course, breathing yourself to sleep. So maybe doing a little meditation. There's lots of sleeping meditations and bedtime meditations that you can do on YouTube, different, there's different, um, sound waves you can listen to like blue, blue, white light and white light. And, um, these can really lull you into a deep sleep. And I mean, the thing about sleep is it's literally free, right? Sleep is free. It's just a matter of getting into that routine, you know? So if you're someone who struggles to sleep, having a nighttime routine is really important so that you can stabilize your circadian cycle or your circadian rhythm. So, um, you want to maintain regular sleep and wake hours, plenty of activity and light exposure. If you are going out outside during the day, really try and absorb that sunlight, like look up at the sun and let your body know it's daytime right now. So that when it's dark, your body knows it's dark, it's nighttime, time for me to go to bed. Um, early meal timing, like I said before, just making sure that your meals are a little bit before bed and then avoiding bright light in the evening. So same thing, you don't wanna throw, up your, throw off your circadian rhythm. So if it's pitch black out, but you have the brightest lights on in your house, that's really confusing for your body and your brain. 
One supplement that you can take to help with sleep and stress actually is magnesium. I absolutely love magnesium. Almost every single one of you is probably deficient in magnesium if you're not already supplementing. I think it was found that like 90% of Americans are magnesium deficient. Um, magnesium has a ton of benefits um, and there's a bunch of different types of magnesium, magnesium citrate, magnesium malate, et cetera. Um, magnesium threonate is the one that has been shown to be more effective for sleep and um, stress relief. So if you want to take magnesium for that, you can. Magnesium is a really, um, it's a low cost supplement that you can take that they sell at pretty much any place where they sell supplements. So yeah, I'm a big fan of magnesium. All right, managing stress. So chronic stress suppresses the immune system um, by releasing the hormone cortisol. So I touched on that earlier, but long-term stress promotes inflation as well as imbalances the immune cell function. So stress isn't just stress, like it is a real threat to your body and your mind and can lead to more chronic conditions. So how can we manage that stress? Some recommendations would be deep breathing exercises, which can literally switch your body out of that fight and flight rib mode and into the rest and digest mode, which will decrease cortisol release and help relax your body. So when you are stressed, your body, that little caveman inside of you thinks something is attacking you and is in this survival mode. And you want to switch your body out of that and get into that rest and digest mode. So that's why when you're um, more stressed and your cortisol is raised, you're more likely to retain belly fat. It's because your body's not resting and digesting properly. So, you know, I always say what works for you is what works for you. So maybe relaxing to you means exercise. Maybe exercise is stressful to you. So maybe it's journaling, maybe it's yoga, maybe it's spending time outdoors in nature. Maybe it's grilling in your backyard, whatever it is for you. Finding the things that help you relax and relieve that stress are incredibly important. And your life really does depend on it. Your health and well-being and your immune system really do depend on that. So um, some herbs and su natural supplements that can help you out are ashwagandha, which is an adaptogen. So taking an adaptogen blend can be really helpful. I'm a big fan of Four, Sigmat Four Sigmatic. That's a brand they have an adaptogen blend that you can add to your drinks or your coffee. Um, and then rhodiola, lemon balm, and chamomile. So a glass of chamomile tea at the end of the day, great for stress relief. All right, on to supplements, last one. Um, so filling in the gaps. So like I said, there's gonna be some people who can't get that variety of foods, struggle with it. So here's what I want you to do. Take a daily multivitamin. This covers your bases. It has all those vitamins that you get from your foods. Look at your multivitamin and see if it includes a vitamin D. If it doesn't, definitely take a vitamin D, probably at least 800 or more. Um, talk with your doctor. Some people are taking 2000. Um, it just depends on your needs. A good quality probiotic. If you can afford it, they can be a little pricey. I recommend that everyone takes a probiotic. I think they are life-changing. I can say from my own personal experience, my digestion is like night and day. If I stop taking my probiotics for a couple of days, like everything just runs more efficiently with the probiotics. Um, your omegas, so like an omega-369, I really like Nordic Naturals Omega um, that they have. It has like DHA, EPA, omega-369, that type of deal. Um, a B complex vitamin, if it's not in your multivitamin, and then turmeric, ginger, and res resveratrol are some other anti-inflammatory supplements. Not the resveratrol in your wine; that won't work. Uh, <laughs> there is a little bit in that, a little bit of that in there, but it is like such a small amount that you're not going to get the benefits. Um, so those are some really great supplements that you can get. Eat your food as medicine. Otherwise you have to eat your medicine as food, right? That's how it goes. So that is all. That is my whole presentation. And I ended right at 1130. So I'm very proud of myself. Does anyone have any questions? I hope you guys found this helpful. Like I said, I'm going to send out the recording so you guys can watch this again if you need to. Um, or if you have any questions, of course, my email phone number is right there. Feel free to call or text me. But otherwise, 
have a wonderful Halloween weekend and have fun and relax this weekend and keep that immune system boosted. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today, you guys. You're very welcome.